Hey guys, Saad here. Have you ever spent weeks building this amazing automation or AI agent, but made zero dollars from it? Maybe you've been in the AI and automation space for quite a while, maybe a couple months, and maybe you made some freelance money, but in reality, nothing sustainable. Well, I was there too. So today I want to show you the easiest way to know whether your automation will actually make you money or just waste your time using something that I like to call pain sniffing, which is a systematic way that I use to scale my sales team agency to over 100K a month. In fact, we are at around 165K a month uh, this month. So let's get into it. So the first thing I want you guys to understand is that you are not not the problem. And let me explain. The reality is, is that you've been conditioned by the endless content in the AI and automation space, which is, to be fair, 99% fluff, where basically creators push complex fancy systems that don't make any money instead of like simple systems with real business value. Because obviously they don't get that much views and people just follow the hype. So a byproduct of that is that now you believe that technical skills and building the most complex, fanciest automations is the answer. So you start thinking like a builder, okay? You constantly say, if I get better at MIG.com and A10, clients will just magically show up, right? So you learn all that, but the moment you want to generate or pitch a real client, well, you stop. You realize you don't know how to sell. So what happens is that you get this reality check from the market that simply tells you you weren't building a business, you were just building tools. So this classical conditioning that relies heavily on just building the fanciest workflows instead of like solving the most expensive business problem. Because it's not about what you build, guys, or the impressiveness or the attractiveness of the system slash automation you build in. Well, it's about whether the market needs it or not. So whether it's AI, automation, SMMA, whatever niche, whatever business, you know, like the business fundamentals are still going to be the same regardless of the niche industry, okay, or the business model. And it's been like this since the beginning of time, okay, a business that doesn't solve a painful problem that a market needs simply is not a good business, right? So in order for you to sell automation, it has to solve a painful problem fundamentally. So in simple terms, you've been taught to be a better technician, when in reality, what you actually needed was to learn how to be a better salesperson or someone who just understands business. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys a simple exercise that I like to call the money test framework. Framework. Okay. So this exercise is going to help you guys identify whether the automation that you are currently building is worth your time or just basically trash. And trust me, it's going to be that simple. Okay. So let me go ahead and explain. Now, if the automation is revenue generating, which means the automation makes money, well, it's a good automation, okay? So if the system that you're currently building automation workflow, whatever, directly brings in customers or books meetings or closes deals, businesses will pay premium prices for it, okay? Now, if the automation saves time without revenue, that's a maybe, okay? Because you're competing right now, you're competing on cost savings. Now, this is a race to the bottom because businesses will almost indefinitely, well, they, they will always find cheaper ways to save time. Okay. For example, they will always like find a VA or like a higher VA or like a cheaper tool. And this is something that I also do. Like I just hire a VA because a VA is a human. Okay. They will handle these saving time tasks almost better than any automation. Okay. The third thing is, if it looks impressive, but don't generate or doesn't generate revenue, well, it's trash. No one will buy, okay, and no one will use. So now you kind of understand whether the automation that you are currently building is worth your time or not. But now you might be thinking, Saad, well, how do I find businesses that need revenue generating automations or workflows? Well, this is where I'll explain something called pain sniffing. Okay, 
Well, Saad, what is pain sniffing? Well, pain sniffing is simply sniffing the pain, right? It's kind of like spotting um, pain signals, okay? So pain signals are essentially just visible symptoms that show that a business has a cash leak or friction points, basically a bottleneck, and they know it deep down, okay? So these are signals that actually mean that the business is bleeding money, and if you can automate that, well, obviously you're going to get paid. So think about it like visible indicators that a business is actively losing money right now, not could be more efficient or it might save time maybe in the future. No, they are bleeding cash every day and they know it. And if they don't fix the problem, well, the problem is only going to get worse. So the first pain signal that we're going to be talking about is the hiring signal. Okay. So hiring signals are kind of like little breadcrumbs that tell you that a company is about to spend money on talent or hiring someone that does something that you can do better. So it's very timely, kind of kind of like a showing up to a party at the right time. Saad, can you stop being a bouncer? Can you ditch the bouncer identity? So yeah, it's kind of like 1 a.m. when I was bouncing. This is where stuff gets pretty spicy. So you come at the right time, right? So one of the best hiring signals is a company hiring for sales. Now, if a company is posting jobs that are hiring for salespeople, well, it's it's a clear signal that they need help with getting more customers. Since the entire job of a salesperson, if you guys don't know, is literally just writing emails, cold calling people and following up with leads. And that's like the traditional model for sales growth. Okay. Add in more people despite the high cost, hiring benefits, salary, taxes. Okay. And also the lack of consistency of these sales reps. And in working with dozens of startups at this point, this is what they usually do. Okay. Ask any startup, what's their greatest challenge and the chances are is going to be sales okay on the top of the list right so this is companies hiring for sales okay it means they need help with customer acquisition getting more clients more customers more book demos whatever okay now there's another um there's another hiring signal which is if a company is hiring for like an onboarding specialist now i know you might be thinking sad well if a company is hiring for an onboarding specialist, a specialist, well, that means I can sell them an automated onboarding system using Mega.com or NA10. That sounds smart, right? Well, I'm here to tell you guys that's wrong because this is what I like to call low quality signals. And the reason why is because if they are hiring internally, it means they've already made a strategic decision. What they say is that we want to handle this problem in-house, okay? So that onboarding specialist that they're going to hire isn't just going to sit there to press buttons or like drag and drop modules on make.com or like NA10. They will own the process, okay? So they will work with the internal developers, maybe even build stuff themselves. So when you pitch like an external like automation, in NA10 or like make.com, you're not solving their problem. What you're doing is you're just talking to the wrong buyer at the wrong time with the wrong offer. Okay. So they don't need the external automation. They need someone that's going to come in, in that company. Okay. Or business. And he's going to work with the developers, the internal dev team to have something like an onboarding system that is sustainable, reliable, and essentially just work with them for a long time. So they can essentially just own the entire process themselves. Okay. Now, if they are hiring for like a marketing specialist, well, that's a different story. Now, that's a good signal. And the reason why is because in my experience, when a company is hiring for a marketing specialist, they ha like they have good leads, they get leads, but they have a problem qualifying these leads. And this is essentially what a marketing specialist does. OK, it helps them. He helped them. He helps them or she helps them or they help them. Right. Whatever. Um, qualify the leads harder. And I'm going to explain this in detail for you guys. You can just leverage this. Okay. So hiring signals, like I said, marketing specialists, the signal is it's called, like I said, inbound overload, which means too many unqualified leads. Okay. So what they say is we're getting leads, but they suck. Okay. So the pain here is they're wasting time on tire kickers. So the angle you can use is you don't need more leads. You need better sorting. So what you can build, well, you can build them a cell system that automatically, for example, qualified leads based on the budget signals 
company size, buy an intent, you can easily do this. Instead of like every lead going to the same sales rep, well, high value prospects or leads gets routed to senior closers while low quality leads get automated nurture sequences, okay? So for example, you can build them like a system that, uh, for example, whenever there's like an interested reply, okay, or like someone that comes from whether it's inbound or like outbound, uh, like a system that triggers and sends them like a form and qualifies them and whether, uh, and dependent on the responses of that lead, they get added to a CRM or maybe you can use like an AI, like an AI that just fetches the responses and then just classifies the responses, whether it's like a hot lead, just warm, lukewarm lead or like a cold lead and hot leads get redirected to like a list in a CRM, for example, or like a task list where it's like, this is the name, the first name, last name, this is the phone number, there is, there is this, the email, and then it gets tagged within the appropriate salesperson. Okay. And then the ones that are lukewarm or, uh, or like cold, they just essentially, there's another trigger, for example, another webhook, and then receives that webhook and it sends them, for example, an automated email response where there's like free content or whatever that uh, like nurtures them. Okay. So you can do this. There's multiple things you can do, but this is just an example. And let me give you like an example, like a real life example. This is something like, like I built before is let's say there's a SaaS company that's getting 200 demo requests per month, but only closing five deals. Well, your system identifies that leads um, from companies with 50 plus employees and recent funding close at 40 rates with solo entrepreneurs close at 2%. So what you do is you build, like I said, a qualification workflow that routes the high value leads to their best close are within 10 minutes while the low value leads get educational content okay until they're ready so the result here again is very tangible the business goes from five closes to 15 closes per month from the same lead volume so that's like an additional 50k in additional revenue okay from just better sorting not from leads See, now you understand kind of like the thought process, okay, behind these revenue generating systems. Now it made them money. So them paying you five, 6K is totally justifiable because they made 50K in return, right? Now let's talk about another signal, which is marketing spend signal, essentially companies that are running ads, okay, in simple terms. So the signal is companies spending cash to acquire traffic. Obviously they run ads so they can get traffic until, and, and then like they enter a funnel, whatever like the company is, whatever the funnel is. So the problem that we all know, okay, and you know, and everybody knows, uh, is that ads are expensive, right? It requires a lot of testing, which means burning through a lot of cash. So what you can do is you introduce them a sales system, like a connector system, basically the same systems that I show you guys in this channel routinely, um, that automatically finds and verifies leads for them to start the outreach. You can totally sell them the, um, I actually built this live. Yeah, I built like, um, like a system that scrapes Facebook ads for competitors, right? And then you can totally sell this to them either like, uh, hands off, or you can just run the outreach for them, depending on your, uh, like, depending on what you want. But I highly recommend you run the outreach for them uh, because you can pitch more. The system is just the system, and they will tell you all, like, all the time, if something is going to break and you're going to be there. And if you think about it, like, the maintenance is not that much, it's probably like $300 or like $400. So you want to run the outreach for them. That way you get, so that way you kind of like hold the keys of the castle. That makes sense, right? And at the same time, you're literally just controlling their entire bottom line. Like you're controlling the entire client acquisition system for them. So they rely on you for a long period of time. This is how you actually just make a ton of money and milk them. Uh, I shouldn't say milk them, but this is what sales are, okay? The idea here is you want to make the customer stay with you and you want to make them stay with you by providing as much value as possible and owning their entire way of actually getting clients. This is just the truth, right? So your angle when you want to pitch this, you want to say instead of paying five to ten dollars per click, hoping for conversions, what if you could systematically reach out to ideal customers for zero point fifty dollars per contact? Okay, so there's a clear signal they're spending money on ads, so you can essentially just get like show them a better way. Now, a real life example, we might be thinking, inside what's a real life example? Well, let's say a marketing agency is spending $10,000 a month on Facebook ads to get five new clients every month. Well, your system scrapes or competitor clients list, finds businesses not working with agencies, then verifies contact information and launches a connection style outreach positioning, like the same one that I share in this channel. 
And uh, so positioning the agency as someone who helps businesses in their specific industry. Now, the result now is they get, for example, 8 to 12 qualified prospects per month through systematic outreach while reducing their ad spend by 60%. So guys, the math is very simple. They're paying, for example, $600 per client through ads, but your system delivers prospects at $50 per qualified lead. So now you justified the cost of like 3 to 5K for them, right? Another thing, some juice from Saad. Don't position this as better than ads, okay? This is something that I do too. Don't don't say, okay, this is better than ads. Don't bash their entire client acquisition method because that's how we get ghosted and they're not going to like it, okay? It's disrespectful. So you always want to acknowledge, okay? You want to say, yeah, I understand this is what you're doing. It's like it's working, but there's, I know, like I know a better way, okay? So you want to position it as insurance against costs because when their Facebook account gets banned, which totally happens, or like iOS updates, there's like a new iOS updates, okay? And that just kills their targeting. Well, they still have a systematic way to reach customers, right? So this is the second pain signal. Let's talk about the recent funding signal. So recent funding is basically a company that just raised a bunch of money from investors. So the signal here is very simple. The company just raised money, okay? And they need to use it and deploy it for growth. So that's a pretty good signal that they're looking to grow because if they just got money from investors, well, they're probably, they, they want to grow, right? And a byproduct of that is probably hiring more people or like finding better ways to get clients because this is what they want, how to grow a business. Well, how to grow a business, simply grow the customer base, get more customers, simply, right? So the pain here is they have money, okay? They, there is fresh capital, which means another thing, there's pressure to show rapid co customer acquisition and revenue growth for investors. Because keep in mind the money, like the money came from the investors, all right? So th they raised money from investors. So the angle is you have the budget to grow, but do you have a systematic process to turn that into predictable customers? So this is the pitch. So like I said, funded companies need to show investors grow metrics weekly, okay? So they will spend on systems that generate measurable customer acquisition. And this naturally just snowballs into selling them sales systems because, well, they have budget allocated for growth initiatives. They need a trackable, reportable customer acquisition process to show the investors, okay? And they're also under pressure to scale systematically rather than rely on ad hoc methods. So ad hoc methods basically running ads, etc., referrals, word of mouth, okay? Because these are limited, right? And then they need the systems that work independent of individual team members. So they don't have to rely on constantly like hiring more sales reps, more salespeople. So they need something like their systematic way, which this is where you come and you shine and you sell them your sales system. And also, this is really important. I should probably like put a, like a giant label here, like a... I'm going to use a red color here. They're not looking for cheap automation, okay? They want a systematic revenue generation way or system that can scale with their growth plans. So guys, quick question. Don't you see that everything goes back to customers? So essentially, we've successfully dismantled all the AI and automation gurus telling you to build stuff just for the sake of building stuff. So I want you guys to learn thinking for yourselves, like think past level one, don't just follow the crowd, the hype. Uh, just because someone has like tons of subscribers, hundreds of thousands of subscribers, that means uh, like they know what they're doing. So you want to take everything with a grain of salt and challenge people's ideas and frameworks, because that's how you actually win in this AI and automation space. And it will change your business, change your life for the rest of your life. So you guys can use these pain signals to quickly find and identify if it's this automation is worth your time or trash. So now the only thing you have to do is simply just get out there, take action. I believe in you and I'll talk to you soon. And by the way, uh, let me know if you guys like this format of videos where basically it's just me explaining things without like any fancy like even like um, if you notice, like my channel has no minimal, like it's very minimal editing. And I get pitched every single day from editors to edit for me videos. But I feel like this is not like, the, the, I don't want this channel to be like that. I don't like these flashy, you know, uh, ADHD channels where they show like just hype. I don't like that. I honestly think they are cringe. So just let me know if you guys like this format and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.